mean, we're having a time with our little buddies. We're making traditions. We're having a little family time. We enjoyed our family. Had a big old bonfire out there and had a good time in the Lord. I know some of you, uh, you city suckers can't enjoy country life, but hey man, you ought to come to the mountains and to the hills once in a while and enjoy life. It, it's wonderful. Brother Larry went up there the other day and he came back a different man, like Moses. He seen the glory of the Lord when he got up there. When he come back down, and, and Larry said, Don't ever come off that mountain, preacher. He said, It's so quiet. It's so, Brother Frank, tell him something up there. Hey man, I mean, angels are up there. God is up there. The Holy Ghost is up there. Amen. It's a there. Say amen. That mountain talk. Where was I? I'm talking about uh, having rituals and traditions. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Praise God. Well, what, 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 what I'm trying to say. I, 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 I don't have much time here. But you know what? What happened? What happened with, uh, listen to me. Gomer was the wife of Hosea. And her name carries the idea of consumption or completion. What, what happened in Gomer's life was she started out right, but in the completion of her life, things ended up bad. She ended up down at the street, outside her family, away from God, away from her family. And she just didn't say, well, I'm out of here and go. No, that takes a decision in your life. To, and what I'm, where I'm going with this is you just don't drift away from the Lord and just end up out there. You start out small and then you get over here and the next thing you know you made another move and the next thing you know you made another move and the next thing you know you made another move. And my message to every one of our families, especially to you young mothers and you young wives and you young people here today, is be careful that you don't drift away from the Lord and get away from God because it will ruin your life if you don't watch it. Amen. Amen. You, we've got a lot of seniors here today. They can tell you the mistakes that they have made. Amen. I can tell you the mistakes that I have made, but I'm trying to tell you today, if you're not careful, you can drift away from God. Boy, my burden is there today. There are several things we need to look for in our lives if, we, if we're not careful. How do you know you're drifting or cooling off spiritually or drifting away from the Lord? Let me give you two or three right quick. Here, number one, if, you, if one grows bold, if, if something grows bolder in temptation, with temptation, and you flirt with it, if you flirt with temptation, you better be careful. Amen. You're going to start drifting. Right, right. Let me just say it plainly here today. Don't flirt or play with sin. Amen. Teenagers, young people, you young married, you young ones, don't flirt with it. Don't play with it. You get close to the fire, guess what happens? Yeah. Right. Amen. I picked the little one up. He wanted to throw a stick in that fire so bad. So I finally got one. I got up there real close. I bent over in the flame and I let him throw it. Buddy, he felt that. He said, hot. He said, hot. He come back to Mama. He was blushed in the face. He said, Mama, hot, hot. Yeah, the closer you get to the fire, the more you'll get burned. Amen? And if you start flirting with temptation, are y'all listening to me today? If you start flirting with things that are not godly, and you start flirting with things that are outside of God, if you start with the next thing you know, for it's over with, you're going to get, listen, it'll ruin your family. Your family will be disrupted. The, the devil will destroy it if he can get it. Quit flirting with temptation. Amen? God help us today. I'm trying to help somebody today. Well, that didn't help you. Let's, let's see another one. <laughs> making, uh, making a small matter of sins, which once seemed grievous, is a sure means of defeat. Making small matters of sin. Right. You see, sin used to bother you when you committed sin, but when you make small and make little of sins, uh, uh, you're drifting. Are y'all getting what I'm saying here? And if we make small matters, listen, uh, all sin is sin against God. Amen? It's all sin. And it's all, ain't no little one or big one. It's all sin and it's all against Him. Amen? Right, amen. My friend, if, you, if you're not careful about the small matters of sin, where they once grieved you. And uh, I mean, we, we hear the common statements that says there's nothing wrong with that. And then you go playing with it. 
You say things like, uh, you're narrow-minded and this is not as bad as that. That's not so bad. Amen? That's not so bad. Well, you better be careful. Amen? Are y'all with me today? You better be careful when you make light of little things and common Amen. things of sin. I don't tell you it's all bad. How about this? Number three, for one to be comfortable in carnal living. Amen? If you're comfortable in carnal living so that there is little service for Christ often results in backsliding. When you become carnal and you don't want to serve the Lord anymore. Amen? You say, preacher, how do I keep from sliding? I'll tell you just the opposite. Start serving Jesus. Amen? Amen. Start seeking the Lord. Start coming to church. Be faithful to God. Get involved in church. That's how you can quit, uh, keep, keep from slipping and being carnal. Amen? Oh, God, help us today. How about this one right here? Spending less time in the Bible leads to weakness, huh? Amen. Don't bow your head. We all need this, don't we? Amen. If you don't spend time in the Word of God, guess what's going to happen? You're going to start forming habits and getting away from God. I know that didn't help nobody. How about that? When God's exhortation becomes a drudgery or an obligation rather than a joy, a delight, the heart is growing cold. Amen. I don't want to just go through the motions and go through the systems and go through it. I like to praise God. Listen, I don't even get my family together like that all the time. So guess what happens when we get together? I'm going to enjoy it and exhort it and lift it and praise it and enjoy it. Boy, there's times when we used to shout the house of God down as a family. Amen. And I don't even get them together much anymore. Praise God. But when we get together, we get around the piano and go to praising God and loving the Lord. Amen? Boy, that's what it's all about. Listen, you see that little boy that we picked up a while ago? Oh, my Lord. There's where my heart is. Amen. That's where my concern is, folks. Listen to me. There's only one shot to raise your children. Only right. one shot. Right, amen. Mom and Daddy, there's only one shot. I only get one shot being a blessing, trying to help my grandmothers. Two years old. Gracie, three years of age. Amen. We was out there acting like a bunch of quacks and nuts yesterday, having a ball. I mean, just enjoying everything, kicking the ball around. I'm telling you, every time we opened the refrigerator, that two-year-old had his mouth open. Amen. I took him down to McDonald's. Man, he was cramming them french fries. I'm telling you. I said, boy, slow down for crying out loud. I mean, and then he wanted an ice cream. He stuck the whole thing in his mouth. It was up his nose, almost in his eyeball. But boy, he knew what to do with it. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Papa is enjoying all of that right now. Amen. And praise God, I listen, all of you young married and young ones that got these bubbles, listen, there's nothing greater, there's nothing greater than having your family here in the house of God. You bring them, you only get one shot at age two. You only get one shot at age three. You only get one shot, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Next thing you know, you turn around, they'll be 30 years old. Are you hearing me? Use it for the glory of God and get your family in church. Amen. Amen. Praise God. There'll be one glorious day, eight, six, or seven, or eight. I'll tell you, God will speak to the heart for so well. You'll see your grand or one of them little bubbles receive the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior. And hey, 20 years later, when we're old and feeble, we can't walk around. They'll be preaching to us. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. But you won't get that. You won't get that drifting away from the Lord. Right. You won't get that unless you get this Bible in their hand. Amen. Pray. Have a family altar. Amen. Talk about Jesus in your home instead of cussing and fussing at each other all the time. Right. Come on. I'm trying to help somebody here today. You know why I had children to serve God today? Because mom and daddy live for Jesus at home just like they did down at the church house. Amen. Don't duck. Right. Amen. 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 We not only pray at home, but we pray at church. We not only live for Jesus at home, we live for Jesus at church. And we try not to drift at home so our lives will be glory and be glory to His name. Are y'all with me? I got to close. Don't drift. You know what happens? I didn't get to preach the message. 
she left Hosea. Now get this. Hosea didn't leave her. You know what God told Hosea? You might not love me anymore. That's what he's saying to Israel. Israel, Israel, you might turn your back on me and you might turn your back on God. But can I tell you, God never left Israel. Amen. God still loved Israel. God still loves you today. And you might be here drifting and you might be afar and you might be out yonder and have gone away from the Lord and things of God don't mean anything to you. You don't, you don't serve the Lord or not on fire for the Lord like you used to be. Can I tell you, you might have left him, but he has and left you. Amen. You know what God told Hosea? God told Hosea, go get your lover. Go get her. Hallelujah. And that's a picture of the Lord Jesus coming down to where she is. I can see Hosea now coming to get her. Prostitute. He said, go love her. Chapter 3. Look here at chapter 3. We'll go to the house. Look at chapter 3, verse number 3. Chapter 3, verse 3. He said, I said unto her, thou shalt abide with me many days. Thou shalt not play the harlot. Thou shalt not be for another man. So will I be also. So will I also be for thee. For the children of Israel shall abide many days without a king, without a prince, without a sacrifice, without an image, and without an ephod, without a teraphim. Afterward shall the children of Israel return, notice this, and seek the Lord their God and David their king. And there shall be fear of the Lord and His goodness in the latter days. Hey, Amen. You know what God is saying? He said, Jose, you go back there and get that woman that drifted off and walked off of you. And you go put your arms around here. I, I wrote down like the wreck going to get my mama this morning. The Lord gave me a thought of all the familiar things. And, oh, I mean, Jose loved his wife. And I was thinking about all the familiar things a husband and wife had gone through. They had a child together. And they loved Loved one another and dear God, huh? Hosea loved her. I want to tell you today, Jesus Christ loves each and every one of you today. Hey, Amen. Yeah. Because He's familiar with the things that He used to. And the same God that loves you, and the same God that caressed you, are y'all getting this? And the same God that picked you up, and the same God that saved you, is the same God that loves you when you drift all the way from Him. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Oh, praise God. I want to say thank you, mothers. I want to say thank all of you mothers for being the mothers that you are. Amen. Keep your family together. You husbands and wives, stay together. Serve God together. For our children, let's raise them for the Lord. Amen. 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 I love this poem, and I want to thank the Lord for my mama. We were coming down the road. You said 51 years, Brother Carter, Mr. Rita, I remember last year having their 50th wedding anniversary. My mom and dad were coming. My mom, we, we were talking about my dad coming down the road. This June the 6th, June 6th, it had been 56 years. It had been 56 years. And she said this statement. She said, me and my daddy, me and my husband talking about my dad, were together 55 years. And they served God together 55 years. Amen. She said this thing. She said, time passes real fast. Right. Amen. Can I plead with you moms and dads? Yes. My mama here is 75 years of age. My daddy's not here. Time passes real fast. That's right, brother. Yeah. Amen. I don't know where it went, but I'm 54 years old. I don't know what happened. I was just running bases the other, the other day, it seemed like. At age 18, I rounded in second base and they couldn't catch me. Now I round second, it's almost like I got to call an ambulance for me. <laughs> it's almost 911 time sometimes. It's under God. I, I said, What happened to you, David? Ray, Vi had me out here, and some of these other old preachers like Brother Wayne here say amen, Brother Wayne. Brother James, he had all the old men out there digging poles. Dig it holes. Hey. We'll be done by noon. <laughs> <laughs> we was wishing with supper time would come and hurry up with it. Amen. <laughs> About four or five o'clock. They went around to the concession stand and then they decided some blame brain decided they're going to go down this way and praise God we went down that way went all the way up. We've dug more holes and poles right here than in the law allowed. Amen. And all of us, when we come 
in here was all, all of us were walking around like this right here. Could barely get to our cars when we got through. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hey, folks. It's worth it all serving Jesus. Amen. I remember the familiar things. I remember the fellowship things. I remember the friendly things. I remember, and I can just see, I can just see Jose going back and getting his wife. Restoring back the fellowship and the love of saying, listen to me, if you've gotten away from the Lord, there's a good place around this altar Amen. to get around this altar Amen. and say, Lord, I left you, but I'm glad you didn't leave me. I want to tell you Amen. good news from heaven's headquarters today. Jesus still loves every one of us in this building here today. I don't care how far you've been. I don't care where you've been. I don't care what you've done. Praise God on Mother's Day. We can thank God for our mothers and thank God for our families and thank God that we still have church and have one another and have a Savior that will always care for us. Amen. Amen. I'll read this poem. I'm through. Y'all come and get a song. Come on. Let's get a song. I say this for my wife. I say this for my mother. The poem simply here. I got a dear preacher friend in heaven. Who wrote a book of poetry. Brother William Thomas was a dear friend of mine. He's in heaven. I preach with him in his church. He's in heaven. He wrote a poem called Mother. I'd like to end it this way. The, the, the poem goes like this. It says, if I were your son, you know what I'd do. I'd thank my God for a mother like you. Who did her best to guide me right on sunny days in stormy nights. And if I were your daughter, I'm sure I could say, you tried to help me in every way. And have, and, and have gone that extra mile to prove to me that you are the best mother that could possibly be. And if I were your baby, I would look above and humbly say, thanks, Mother, for a mother's love. That stood the test through the heat and the cold. I know Mother's heart must be made of gold. And if such a mother were to be my wife, she'd be the most precious thing Amen. I ever had in my life. To know that God had given me a mother and a wife such as thee. Amen. Amen. I thank God for my wife. Amen. I thank God for my wife who is a loving mother. Amen. I thank God for my mother. Some of you need to, some of you youngins need to give back your fellowship with your mother again. Some of you have broken your fellowship with your mother. Some of you need to get right with God first. And then go get right with your mom. Some of you need to put your arms around your mom. I don't care if you're 25, 35, or 95. You still got a mother, praise God. You need to go to your mother and say, Mama, forgive me. Right. I love you. You don't know the days and the hours and the times like this lady right here that's taking care of me. You know how I dress like I do? I'll tell you how. That dear lady right there taught me how. Sunday morning, I'd come out. Pants would be there. The shirt would be there. She even made us wear bow ties back in a hundred years ago. Amen. <laughs> we looked like we was going to church. Amen. We looked like we was heading to God's house. Because I had a mother that loved God. Taught me how to bring honor and glory to His name. Amen. Amen. Some of you are not right with your mom here today. I'm just going to apply that while I'm here. Some of you need to go to mom and say, Mom, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Forgive me. Get it right with your mother. And the same God that died on an old lady cross to cover your sins is the same God that will forgive you of all of your sins and make that relationship back to what it ought to be. Amen? Amen. We're all going to heaven one day if you love God. Amen. If you're saved. Why don't you just get it settled today and say, hey, I'm going to serve God. 
I'm not going to drift. I'm not going to walk away from the Lord. I'm going to keep my family together. If there's anything between you and your mama or your dad, praise God. I know it's not Father's Day, but praise God. Go get it settled with the Lord. Amen. Amen. And enjoy serving Jesus. Because when Jesus comes, guess what? All the families saved by the grace of God. Amen. I can't speak for your family, but all of my family is heading that way. How about yours? Amen. You know why? We worked at serving Jesus. We worked at honoring Jesus. We worked at telling them how Jesus saves. I'm saved by the grace of God, and I'm going to heaven. How about you today? Let's all stand and have a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, speak to our hearts today. Some need to just get around this altar right now. Just need to come right now. And Lord, get that fellowship back with the Lord Jesus Christ. Some of us have drifted away and we don't exhort and praise God. We don't have the fire burning in our souls. We don't love you like we ought to. Lord, I pray that you encourage me, Lord, to stay with the stuff and stay faithful to you and seek the Lord and start serving the Lord. Oh, my Lord, help us not to drift in these last days. Lord, bless our families. Bless our young families. Bless our young mothers that are carrying these little babies around. May they commit today to give their lives to Jesus as mothers and fathers so that their children at age three, four, five, and on down the road would come to know Jesus and be saved. Oh, God, help us not to drift for our children's sake. Time passes fast and Jesus is coming and Lord, we want to serve you. And I pray that everybody here is saved by the grace of God. If there's one that doesn't know the Lord today, it'd be a good day to walk down this aisle and receive Christ as our Savior and trust the Lord and be saved today and know that they're on the way to heaven because of the saving grace of the Lord Jesus. Lord, save today, I pray. Speak to every heart now. In Jesus' name. What is it? Y'all want to sing us what? Listen, the altars are open today. You need to come and Oh, He loves you today. You come on right now. If you need to come and get around the altar and say, Lord, I, I love you. Thank you that you didn't leave me. I sure don't want to leave you. If you need the Lord today, I tell you, the Bible will sure save you today if you come today. You come and we'll take the Bible and show you how to be saved. If you need to come, come on.
always been there. Amen. You only got one chance at it. Give it all you got while you get Amen. Raise your children for Jesus. Yeah. Raise your family for the Lord. I thank God for my mom and dad. I want to raise my family the same way. Amen. We got a missionary coming tonight. We'll be back tonight. I know all of you are going to eat like a bunch of hogs today. But praise God. He's a blind missionary. He's got, he's a preacher. He's a good one. A blind missionary. Can you believe that? You come back tonight. We'll enjoy that. You have a good day with your family. Have a good time with your family. We love you. Thank you for coming today. Let's dismiss in a word of prayer. And there's gifts for all the mothers. Huh? All the mothers. There's gifts for all the mothers. All the mothers get a gift when they go out today. Is that right? Amen. Well, God bless you, mothers. Happy Mother's Day. I hope you have a great day in the Lord. Let's pray. Lee, dismiss us today. Safely. Be sure to give you praise, honor, and glory for Jesus. Amen.